since the beginning of time, there has always been a division of people who went against the grain to try and amass wealth, and typically it wasn't too ethical. Today, we're going to talk about one of the biggest cons ever recorded in history and show you exactly how they did it. So let's start with a question. Have you ever been scammed before? Most of us have been at some point deceived by someone or something. Not too fun, is it? Every day, there are thousands of scams happening all around us, and most of them get away with it unnoticed. But there are some that make history and will be forever remembered, and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Have you ever heard of the monumental event that went by the name of Fire Festival? This is one of the most elaborate scams that went viral in 2017. So what was this all about? How did it come together? What went wrong? And how did this turn out to be one of the biggest scams in history? Let's find out. Fire Festival was anticipated to be one of the most luxurious musical festivals that was founded by con artist Billy McFarland and rapper Jerul. The intention behind this festival was to promote the Fire application, which was an application designed for scouting and booking music talent. This festival was supposed to take place on April 28th to the 30th, and then again on May 5th to the 7th on the Bahamian island of Great Exuma. Ja Rule and Billy McFarland became acquainted with each other, as Ja Rule used to visit every event that was hosted by McFarland. So, after creating a strong relationship, they both became partners and decided to take over an island by the name of Norman's K. This was a private island, and McFarland leased it upon his name, with the condition that there would be no mention of Pablo Escobar in any marketing material. Why you ask? Well, simply because Pablo had used this same island to smuggle drugs in the 70s. This becomes very important later in the video. So once the island was in their possession, the promotions began. This event was publicized by big influencers like Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, Haley Baldwin, Emily Ratajkowski, and many more. They posted videos on Instagram boasting about how insane the Fire Festival was going to be. There was also a promotion video that featured Bella Hadid and other models from her agency. In this video, these models were running across the tropical beach with messages promising an immersive music festival for two transformative and life-changing weekends. But during the promotions of this festival was the first mistake. McFarland had said that the island was owned by Pablo Escobar previously, which was ultimately a lie, and that was the one thing that he was told not to say, due to which the owner immediately canceled all the arrangements. But the party didn't stop there. Shortly after they were kicked out of the island, they were on to searching for a new place to host the event. But this was something that was kept hidden. It was not until only two months left on the calendar for the event when they found their new venue for the ultimate scam. At the last moment, the Bahamian government came to help them and gave McFarland the permit to host the festival on a site that was set aside for development at the Rocky Point on Great Exum. The scam was backed up and operational. Now, the first of many problems was that on social media, they had mentioned that the event was being held on an isolated island that was owned by Pablo Escobar. But this was far from the truth, as the island was not isolated at all, and it was never owned by Escobar. It was actually located near a sandals resort on Great Exuma. Since it was supposed to be located in an isolated development, they simply altered the map in a way that still made it look like the festival is taking place on Escobar Island. Problem solved. So, how much did it cost to get into this elaborate and luxurious festival? Well, in the beginning, the tickets were $500 to $1,500, and for VIP, there was a package of $12,000. They were told that they were to receive luxury villas to live in while attending. But the real problem was the investment overall. To host an event of this magnitude, they should have required planning of at least a year. But McFarland ignored every suggestion and thought he could pull through on his own. To give reference, due to lack of funding, they hired a team of chefs that cost around $1 million while the original budget was projected around $6 million. Attendees were told that they would get food that was made at the hands of celebrity chefs, but there was nothing like that coming. With just two weeks left for the event to take place, they found themselves in a position of not being able to provide villas for the guests to stay in, so they simply switched their plans and settled for tents. Now, this was definitely something that they should have told the guests about. Even Yaron Lavi, a veteran event producer, told McFarland to send the notice. But McFarland was not ready to let this master plan fall apart, so he neglected sending the email and simply told Yaron that it was in progress. 
On top of that, many things went wrong with the financing. The Comcast venture was supposed to invest $25 million, but ended up canceling it. After the Comcast deal fell through, McFarland obtained some temporary financing for Fire through an investor by the name of Ezra Birnbaum that required the company to repay at least $500,000 of the loan within 16 days. Now, as McFarland was running low on the budget, he suggested that the attendees should deposit $300 to $500 for every day they planned to stay. He also promised that they would be issued a special RFID-equipped smartwatch ID and the event would be completely cashless and cardless. Pretty cool concept, I would say. Well, around 5,000 people signed up for this event, none realizing the problems that were happening behind the scenes and the master scam that they were about to fall into. And so it began. Initial arrivals were brought to an impromptu beach party at a beachside restaurant where they were piled with alcohol and kept waiting for around six hours while frantic preparations at the festival site continued. McFarland had hired hundreds of local Bahamian workers to help build the site. Meanwhile, organizers had to renegotiate the guarantees they offered to the people who were to play at the festival at costs spiraled out of control. Later, arrivals were taken directly to the grounds by school buses where the true state of the festival site became apparent. Their accommodations were little more than deceiving, to say the least. Most had to sleep in tents with dirt floors, some with mattresses that were soaking wet as a result of the morning rain. The promised gourmet food accommodations were nothing more than inadequate and poor quality food. Festival goers were dropped off at the protection bungalow where McFarland and his team were based so they could be registered, but after hours of waiting in vain, people rushed to claim their own tents. Although there were only about 500 people, there were not enough tents and beds for the guests so they wind up stealing from others. Attendees couldn't leave the festival for the nearby Sandals Resort as it was peak season, with almost every hotel in Great Exuma fully booked for the annual Exuma Regatta. Around nightfall, a group of local musicians took to the stage and played for a few hours, the only act to perform at the event. In the early morning, it was announced that the festival would be postponed and that the attendees would be returned to Miami as soon as possible. They said they would postpone the event, but it was later canceled. The aftermath of this festival was pretty obvious. A lawsuit of $100 million was filed against Ja Rule and McFarland in the state of California. It was filed on behalf of the plaintiff, Daniel Jung, and his lawyer, Mark Giragos. It was a class action lawsuit with 150 other plaintiffs. The lawsuit was for alleged fraud, breach of contract, breach of the covenant of good faith, and negligent misrepresentation. Ja Rule posted on his Twitter saying, It wasn't a scam, and this is not my fault. Later in 2019, Jarul was dismissed from the suit. Later on, many other people joined the lawsuit. In April 2021, this case was settled for $2 million. I wouldn't say this was a lot of money, as there were almost 277 people in this lawsuit, and they all received approximately $7,220 each. But after all this and legal fees, these people only received about $288 each. There was also a second lawsuit that was filed by lawyer John Girardi on behalf of three plaintiffs in Los Angeles but this lawsuit was dismissed later on. But there was a total of eight cases filed against the Fire Festival. There was also an active criminal investigation against McFarland. In 2018, McFarland pleaded guilty to wire fraud in which he was trying to scam the investors, and the second count of wire fraud was to defraud a ticket vendor. In October 2018, he was sentenced to six years in prison and was ordered to forfeit a total of $26 million. So to summarize, there were many things that went wrong with this festival. The first was the requirement of a deserted island. They forgot that they would have to provide accommodation and it would be difficult to provide on a deserted island. The second was an unrealistic deadline. There was no professional organizer in the team and when they hired one, they were ignorant to his suggestions. And the last thing that led to the lawsuit was keeping people in the dark. They clearly knew that they would not be able to live up to the expectations that they created, yet they went ahead with it. If they had informed the attendees about the issue that they were facing and postponed the event to winter, they would have been able to give them the time of their lives, but that wasn't the case anyway. So, what do you think about all of this? Should McFarland have served a longer time in prison? Should the attendees have been reimbursed a greater sum? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to like since it would be a little hard for you to get scammed. So why not subscribe as we'll keep on bringing more videos like this, so you can know and learn better. Until next time, bye-bye!